Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name is Nick and you are watching Astro Exploring. This video is part two in the Astro Berry tutorial series that I'm doing on YouTube. This video is going to assume that you've downloaded and installed Astro Berry and are able to boot into the operating system and connect it to your home Wi-Fi. If that's not the case, then you'll want to check out my first video which shows you how to do all of that. So before you can start using Astro Berry for an imaging session, there's just a few little setup things that we need to go through first. If you go over to the left hand side, you see this little um, arrow here about halfway up the screen. If you click on that, and then you want to click on the telescope tab, this is the Indie Web Manager. What this is going to do is it is going to tell Astroberry what drivers to start and the drivers that you need to select will be of course based on the equipment that you're using so uh, in my instance you can see that i have a canon dslr driver and a zwo um, ccd uh, driver that is for my uh, asi 120 guide camera if like me in the uk clear skies are few and far between you can load some uh, simulator drivers and connect to that and just just to get a feel of the software it's a good way to uh, at least get up and running if you don't want to do that then of course you can still test the the connectivity by loading the drivers of the equipment that you have during the daytime or, or during a clear night so that you can at least test the connectivity and get everything working so that when it is clear you're not trying to tr troubleshoot um, under clear skies. So to load a new profile all you need to do is give it a name in here. So I'm just going to call this one test and hit add profile. And I'm just going to stop that for a second. You can um, you can auto start your drivers, which is what I've uh, got mine doing. Um, so I've got my new profile here called test. And what I want to do now is to select the drivers. So all I'm going to do is click under here. And if you are using a, I don't know, ZWO uh, camera, just type around my microphone. Um, it will ZWO CCD here. Uh, and you would just click on that. And that would now load into the profile. If you had an Altair imaging camera, you would just type in Altair and select that, and that would load. Um, so now we've got uh, Altair ZWO CCDs here. And then you would need to save the profile by going up to next to where it says test and clicking on the uh, save profile button with the, uh, with the down arrow here. Uh, and you can tick the boxes for auto start and auto connect if you want. And that's your profile saved. and if you tick those boxes when you log on, it will load that profile automatically every time. It will start the drivers and uh, it's a good way just to get you up and running quickly. But for me, I'm going to use my DSLR profile V2 and I'm going to start those drivers there. So they've started and then you can just close that. You don't need that anymore. Now there's quite a lot of different software in Astroberry. I'm only really going to be showing two in this video, which is KSTARS and PHD2. But there is other software as well. There's quite a lot to Astroberry, but I don't want to make this video too long. So I'm just going to focus on these two bits of software because they're probably the most common ones that are used. And it's how I use Astroberry for my imaging session. So hopefully that's useful to most people. So I'm going to go ahead and click on KSTARS there. And that's loaded up, tip of the day, we can close that. And there's quite a lot that you can do in KSTARS as well. There's probably a whole video um, just on KSTARS on its own, but I'm not actually going to play around with KSTARS itself in this video. Instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to this little observatory button here and click on that, and that will load up ECOS, which is the image acquisition software that sits within KSTARS. And in ECOS, we're going to want to create a profile as well so that we can tell the software what equipment we are using. To do that, you just click on this little plus button here, add profile, give it a name. You can see that I've called mine DSLR profile V2. Um, it's V2 because I've, I've created a couple of uh, different ones, um, but you can give that whatever name you want. Again, I'm just going to call that test. Mode, you want to set to remote. So if I hover over it here, you're wanting to connect to a remote indie server that is already running. So we're gonna go ahead and click on remote. And the address is astroberry.local, just like it is to connect Astroberry to begin with. And the guiding, in my case, I'm using PHD2, so I want to set that to PHD2. And you can also tick this box here for the Indie Web Manager so that it will store the profile on the server. So we're going to go ahead and tick that. 
And now this is where people's um, setups will be different, of course. So if you're using uh, EQ mod and connecting to your mount so that you can control it, you would go ahead and select that in there. Don't be confused by the CCD drop down here. If you're using a DSLR, then there is an option for DSLR and that will allow you to uh, control your DSLR camera. Um, but if you are using a dedicated astronomy camera, then um, it does have uh, the you know ZWO, uh, CCD and, and others in there as well. The guider is your uh, guide camera, of course. So in my case, I'm using a ZWO CCD. If you're using uh, electronic focuser, you can go ahead and select that down here. Um, any filters, um, if you want to control the dome, you can do that in here as well. And you can also select your telescope. So in my case, I've got a uh, Skywatcher Evo Star 72 ED. But if you want to add a new telescope, then just click on this little plus button here and that allows you to fill out the information. And this is good for plate solving because you're telling the software what uh, aperture, what focal length you're using so that when you're trying to plate solve it, it knows what field of view that it's looking at in the sky. So I'm gonna go ahead and close all of that because I don't need that. So DSLR profile V2 is what I want. And then in order to start ECOS, just click on this little play button here. Now, one word of warning that I found with Astroberry, this is the part where I initially struggled the most. And if you watched my first video when I was using Astroberry for the first time, I never got past this step because it wouldn't connect to the camera. What I found out was that if you turn your camera on and then uh, leave it so that the screen goes blank, um, this is on a DSLR, then the camera has kind of gone into a sleep mode and it drops the USB connection and it won't connect. So it's really important that um, you turn the camera on, give it a few seconds just to make that connection and then hit connect. And you need to do it quite quickly. And the same has applied for my guide camera as well. If I've loaded Astroberry up and then um, left it for a few minutes before I've tried to connect to the guide camera, then um, I think it severs that connection as well because I struggle to um, connect to the auto guider. I've also found when troubleshooting sometimes that if it doesn't connect for the first time, and then I turn the camera off and back on again. Sometimes it's, it's a little bit intermittent as to whether or not it will work. And so at that point, it's easier just to restart um, Astroberry completely by just going over to the uh, menu on the left hand side, hit and shut down and then reboot. And that just restarts everything. And at that point, just get everything loaded up, turn the camera on and then connect and it should connect no problem. So I'm now gonna go and turn my camera on so that I can connect it. Okay, so after you start ECOS, it will come up with this screen here. So you can see I connected to my guide camera and also my uh, DSLR. There are lots of different um, things that you can look at through here, but honestly, we don't really need to worry about any of them on this screen. Just don't close that screen, uh, but just leave it over over to, to one side um, or something. Um, what we want to do is to actually go back to ECOS here. And at this point, we'll want to go over to the camera tab. And all of these different tabs um, are different things. So on the scheduling tab, you can schedule your whole session here. You can see here you've got some observatory uh, procedures over here. Um, and things like that. I've I've not used um, this tab at all, so I'm not going to go through that on this video. The tab that we're interested in at the moment is the camera tab, as you might imagine. And this is where we're going to set all of our camera settings for our imaging session. So exposure, this is exposure time in seconds. So I have been doing um, three minute subs recently, so obviously that would be 180 seconds. The count is the number of exposures that you want to do. Now, obviously you could try and work out how long you're gonna be imaging for and therefore work out the number of exposures. I generally just set it to 150 or something like that, knowing that I'm never gonna to get to that many exposures, uh, but at least I know that it will just keep ticking over in the background. And then when I'm coming back to it to end the session, I can just, I can just hit the stop button and I'm good to go. Delay is, as you might imagine, the delay between exposures. I generally do this for about five seconds. Um, 
I'm guiding now, so I'm dithering between my frames. I think it's a good idea that after you've dithered, just to have a slight delay. I generally do it for about five seconds, just to allow the mount to sort of settle back to where it needs to be so that it's not moving about. The format, you can either have native or fits. I just leave it as, as native. You can um, specify the type of frame that you're taking. If you wanted to take your bias darks and flats um, using this, then you can. I don't bother, so I always just have lights. ISO is pretty self-explanatory. I'm gonna use 1600. And obviously if you were using a dedicated astronomy camera, then you would be um, setting your camera gain there. Uh, the frame size is obviously just the frame size of the actual image and that's set by it knowing what type of uh, camera you're using. The file settings is an interesting one. I've got mine set to uh, save locally, which means locally to the camera, which means that it will save it on the SD card. You could have it set to remote, which would transfer the images onto the Raspberry Pi and you could select the folder in which you want to save those images. Or you could do both if you want to have a backup. I did have an issue recently where after an imaging session, my SD card became corrupt and I lost all of the images from that session. Had I gone with both or if I was just doing it remotely, then I would have been okay. Um, but for the purposes of this video, I'm just going to leave that set to locally. Over here, you've got a few options. So if you want to have a look at the live view through the camera this is basically the same as as hitting the live view on the, on the back of your camera i don't personally find this particularly useful but the option is there if you want to use it just go ahead and close that looping is basically just going to continually loop the exposures based on the time that you have set the very far left hand button is capture a preview and that will just take one frame based on the exposure time that you've set. So if you're just trying to take one test shot just to make sure that, you know, you know you're on your target, but you're just trying to make sure that everything looks okay, um, then you could use that button, which then takes us down to this box here. So basically once you've captured an image, Astroberry is going to download that and it's going to go into show that on the screen. And what you can do is before it shows you that image, you can apply an effect to it. So a, a good one to make sure that you're you know, on target and everything's looking okay is to do the auto stretch function, which a lot of you will be familiar with if you've used other imaging acquisition software like Astro Photography Tool. So I always have that selected so that when my images are coming in, it just stretches the data. Yes, they look horrendously noisy, uh, but that's because you're just stretching a single frame, but at least you'll be able to get a better view of where you are on your target. So that's an overview of this tab. Of course, when you're wanting to set up your imaging, you're gonna want to go through and actually make all these settings. So I'll just go through that quickly now um, and that's basically it so exposure time is 180 seconds we're going to take 150 exposures or we'll never get to that many we're going to delay for five seconds between each frame at iso 1600 in the native format which is the raw format on a dslr it's a light frame and i'm saving my images locally onto the sd card in the camera and when the images come in i want ecos to apply an auto stretch to those images just to make sure that i can uh, see the data and so now that we've set all that, all you need to do is hit this play button and that will start your sequence running. And you can see here, it will keep giving you updates down at the bottom here to say that it's capturing an image, it's downloading the image, it's then delaying for five seconds and then it's gonna start taking an image and you get a little progress bar along here and you can see the exposure time counts down and it will tell you how many pictures it's taken and it will uh, increment the percentage as it goes through these images here. So that is everything that you need to know in order to be able to start taking images using Astroberry. I hope you found this video useful. In my next video, I am going to show you how to auto guide using Astroberry. I didn't want to make this video too long, so I'm doing a separate video, so make sure that you look out for that one. If you like this video, please do remember to give it a thumbs up if it helped you out. And also remember to uh, subscribe to the channel and hit the bell notification so that you're notified every time I upload a video. My name is Nick and you have been watching Astro Exploring and I'll see you guys next time.